Hi, I'm Marjorie Egan from 96.9 Boston Talks and I'm here at Big Picture Framing and I'm going to go through the whole process of framing pictures of my adorable children with a very artsy Jake here, the store manager, who's going to show us how you do it. These are called fillets. The way they work. They can um, either go alongside the inside edge of the frame or oh, nice. they oh, can nice. go along the inside edge of the mat. And what I was thinking was we could do a little bit of, just to get us a little bit of contrast. Oh, that's pretty. So then it just fits in there like that. Oh, wow. That's pretty. And we can we can tweak those colors a bit if we want to fine tune that. But just sort of as a quick visual aid, that's how that might fit together. I like that. And uh, to sort of tie it in with that color right there, something that's not going to overpower the piece, but still yeah. not undersell it either. Um, then we have the that, those colors. Do you think on. I should cut it there so I don't have to pick? It would it be a better picture we if I didn't have that we there? Could, the great thing about having the mats the on it is you can definitely crop that if you want. Yeah, don't you think? Well, let's take a look because it never hurts to try. I, I'd be afraid to make it too tight to, to crowd. Oh, then I, cr I crowd out the, my oldest daughter? Well, she might feel a little bit... Because what, what we want to think about what it's going to yeah. look like over there too on her. Well, what do you think, Mr. Art School? I, I, you know, <laughs> until you pointed out that package, it didn't really bother me. I think that feels very it feels you think proportional. So? Yeah, okay. it feels All right. very balanced. All right, then way. if you think it's okay that way, I'll and take your word for it. Everybody's, you know, front and center. Yeah. Sorta. So of our mats, there are the paper ones, and yep. then we have fabric mats. And of those, there's a couple different kind of surfaces. And the the reason that we show the fabric mats more than not is because the depth of the color that you get with them yeah. is, um, it's a lot more so than the paper mats. I compare it to the difference between paint and Crayola crayon sometimes. This is a silk finish mat. Oh, I like that. And it's I a like, little softer. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, I do too. And it feels I like it better than the white. Yeah, it's a lot easier on your eyes than the white, I think. That's really pretty. I like that a lot. Not, yeah, I'm really liking how that ties in the frame. Part of the, the mat's purpose, among other things, is mm -hmm. to help get your eye from the frame into the photo. Yeah. So it's a little smoother transition like that. Let me ask you something. If you yeah. put, if you have a, like a three or four pictures on like a, you know, next to each other, mm -hmm. is it good to have them in the same kind of frames? It doesn't matter. You know, we get that question all the time, and I find you can make either one work. It kind of depends on what's important to you. Yeah. It, I, I think it would also depend on the pictures. If they're all photographs like yeah. that, it might make a little more sense if it's the same frame. The same frame, okay. But if they're, uh, I have a wall in my house where it's very different pieces of original art. Oh, So neat. I framed each one specific to the piece. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. So it's a very eclectic looking mix of frames, but each one it's works on, art. on the art. Right? Yeah. Right, but I think a lot of times when people are doing a wall of family photographs, it probably makes sense. One thing that's nice to do is to maybe on smaller photos use a slightly smaller frame, mm -hmm. but then lots of times we'll have a similar looking frame that's bigger okay. for the bigger photos. Okay. That way you have a little bit of variety. All right, okay, okay. Um, let me I love that. Good. Yeah, I think that's actually really successful. I don't always get it right exciting. first out of the gate, but sometimes you get lucky. A uh, couple ideas for the glass. The two options that I'd recommend to one or the other here, the um, conservation clear, mm -hmm. what that means is that it's going yeah, to sure. protect it against any fading, yeah. which is the most important part. 99% okay. of any light that's going to hurt, that's going to get blocked out. Okay. It is going to look like regular glass to yeah. you. you know. The museum glass. That's the better one, right? That's the better value. Yeah. It's going to have the same protection against fading, but it's 99% oh, reflection Yeah, free. that's much better. So you eliminate, practically eliminate the glare, but you're going to have greater clarity in their faces. Uh -huh. uh, the colors are going to be a little bit more crisp. Oh, yeah, that's much better. And uh, I don't want to sell the conservation stuff short, but the museum glass, just everything tends to look a little sharper and the colors are truer. Okay. With that, and on a piece this small, it's the the 
price difference is so little that it's, it's worth it. Okay. You know, in a few states. So here it is, the final product, my three gorgeous children. Thank you to the folks at Big Picture Framing. And check it out yourself, Big Picture Framing and BigPictureFraming.com.